If you're a Unity developer, then hang on because I've got something exciting for you. Today, the new Unity 2021 LTS has finally released. And I want to cover the five things that are in there that I think will matter the most to you as a developer or programmer. There's a whole lot of stuff in there, so I want to hit the things that I think will probably impact you the most day to day. Before I get to the details though, if you are a Unity developer and you really like staying up to date with the latest Unity stuff, make sure that you join us at Game Dev Guild. It's an online conference that I'm hosting where we'll have a lot of your peers, experts in the industry, and even the people building these systems, teaching you how to use them, how to use the latest tips and techniques, and just improving your general skills. The goal is for you to be able to come out of almost every session with something that you can use that same day or maybe the next day in your real projects, and to give you some good insight onto some of the new things that are coming up, like the Dots framework and the new Unity multiplayer stuff. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure that you join us at gamedevguild.com. Register today and join us in the Discord server. For me, the biggest thing and most exciting thing coming in this 2021 LTS, although I've already been using it because I like to stay with the tech streams a lot of the time, the biggest change in here, though, that I think you're all missing out on if you haven't upgraded is the C Sharp 8 change. They've upgraded the C-sharp language and the C-sharp runtime or the .NET runtime to .NET standard 2.1 and you now have access to all of the C-sharp 8 features. Some of the more popular ones that you'll see in there are the switch expressions and nullable reference types. Switch expressions I use somewhat regularly. Nullable reference types aren't something that I've personally adapted into my workflow, but I have a few friends who swear by it and think that it's the greatest thing, so it's definitely worth checking out. If you're not ready to change your coding habits though and start implementing C Sharp 8 and .NET 2.1 today, you can always include or enable the IL to CPP option that is now four times faster for the builds. They've done some work on the incremental builds to just speed this entire process up and I'm excited to see how it'll save me time in some of my larger scale projects. To enable it, go to your project settings, go to player, and then choose the scripting backend IL to CPP and give it a build. One of the things you're gonna get automatically from upgrading is faster asset import. They've improved the asset pipelines for textures and meshes to make them faster and just quicker to get things in. But there's also a secret little thing that you might not know about. There's an option to enable parallel importing of your assets. If you want to have multiple assets come in and you've got a nice fast system, I would give this thing a try. Turn on parallel asset import and see just how fast you can import your project. The next set of changes only affects probably half of you, and that's the set of mobile optimizations and workflow improvements. The things that stood out here to me were the Play asset delivery, this is something that was kind of new to me. Google's got a CDN to do all of the delivery of your assets, just like Steam, and I thought that was really cool that that's now in here and supported. Also, Adaptive Performance 3, which I think is just kind of the next version of Adaptive Performance to scale your game back so you don't kill the system and kind of get the best performance that you can without destroying devices. At least that's my understanding. By the way, if I'm misunderstanding adaptive performance, drop a comment below. I'm, I'm not sure on that. Another one that I thought was really exciting, though, that's not just for mobile, but is listed under the mobile section, is the update for addressables. They now support synchronous systems or synchronous code calls. And if you looked at addressables and thought, I don't want to rewrite all of my code to be async, this is a little too confusing, this might be the perfect time to jump back into addressables. Give them a try and see if that's something that might work well for you and fix some of your problems. Also, again, if you're interested in that, make sure you check out Game Dev Guild. We should have a great talk on how to implement addressables into your own projects. The last part of this mobile optimization was the device simulator. It's now built in or part of Unity by default, so you can just go simulate the different devices that you need without having to go through a whole bunch of extra work or grab some third-party tool. Now, I've got to admit, I don't do a lot of mobile stuff, so the mobile changes, while they're great for everybody else, don't really help me that much. But this profiler change is going to be awesome. There's a lot of new features and functionality coming into the profiler. They've added an API so that you can access it at runtime, add in your own counters. And in the newer versions that are coming even a little bit further along, the profiler is getting amazing. Wait until you see the what's coming new in the profiler videos. Those are just, just really cool. But there's a lot in this new profiler that I think is really exciting and worth using. I've been using it myself quite a bit. I think that you should probably check it out. And if you don't use the profiler in Unity and you're not always running over 60 frames a second, 
you probably should do a little bit of investigation, see why I keep ranting about how awesome it is. The one other thing that they've added in with the profiler section that I thought was interesting, but probably, again, only applies to my most hardcore friends, is the code coverage package. If you do unit tests in your games, which some of us do, then code coverage is a nice little thing to tell you how much of your code is actually covered by tests. Usually you've got to use some external tool and now they've added a package. I haven't played with it myself, but I think it's something worth checking out if you're into unit testing and games. And if you do that and you have some thoughts on this code coverage package, drop a comment below and let me know. I'm kind of curious to know how it compares to the other packages I've used outside of game development in the past. And the final thing that I wanted to mention and talk about was the XR integration toolkit. They've done a lot of work to streamline this entire process, but to be honest, I don't think that I'm the best guy to give the information here. If you really are into XR, VR, and AR stuff, I would go check out Dilmer's content or maybe go check out Justin's content. He's speaking for us again at gamedevguild.com. Go check that out and learn a little bit about what's new in XR. But if you really want to get into that stuff, I definitely go recommend you or recommend that you go learn that from the guys who are really heavily focused in it and know all of the details. So those are the big things that are coming. If there was something else that I missed that's maybe not in the programmer list, let me know. I'm kind of curious. I think that I got everything that was really exciting. There was some URP and HDRP stuff that is cool, but not really stuff that you can think about and be actionable on. It's just going to be kind of this passive, passive nice bonus. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. hope it was helpful. If you did, please hit subscribe, thumbs up, drop a comment below and let me know. And again, don't forget to check out gamedevguild.com. I'll see you uh, in the next video.